All right, for our next plant, we have a uh, special guest. We have, ladies and gentlemen, Isaac Mark. Oh, sh wait, don't you want to be Lichter Mark? Okay, hi, this is your GSI Isaac Mark. You can also call me Isaac. And uh, I'm going to introduce Salix lepis in the Salicaceae. Uh, this is a royal willow, and it's a, one of those really nice plants that's a friendly plant. And uh, it grows mostly in riparian areas, so around streams and wet areas, low places. And it's often in this big kind of clump like this. If you come closer, I'll show you some of the leaf characteristics I use to identify it. So first of all, it's a tree, um, but not a large tree, usually you know smaller than about 15 or 20 feet. The branches are really kind of long like this. They all kind of point outwards. And uh, it has simple alternate leaves that are sort of clustered towards the end sometimes. Um, the leaf itself, the, one of the things to me that's really important for these is that the leaf is covered in these kind of in a kind of grayish fuzz that's way more pronounced on the bottom than the top. Uh, the leaf veins are also really clear on the bottom, but not so much on the top. And uh, the leaf shape is really important. It's really like like my hand. It's a uh, lanceolate leaf shape, which means that it's longer than it is wide. And some of these are kind of oblong, so they're wider towards the tip than they are towards the base, but that's a pretty variable kind of thing. The leaves themselves on the edges have these irregular lobes. So they're not, you know, lined up like they are in some plants. They're kind of just sort of like a squiggly line. Along the branches, there's also some other good characteristics for these. So willows are, are deciduous. And uh, the leaves and the flowers are often uh, protected by these buds. And the buds kind of look like squished mangoes that are all lined up against the branch. I don't know how many species of willows we'll see this semester, but one characteristic that I like to focus in on to distinguish Salix uh, laziolepis from other ones are the stipules. And I know this isn't a characteristic that we've looked at yet, so I'll kind of point them out and describe them. So at the base of the leaf, here's the leaf, here's the petiole, and then at the base, there's these little uh, kind of like ear lobes on either side of the base of the petiole, and they're pretty persistent on Salix laziolepis. And some of the other ones, they kind of fade away. So uh, this is a really nice plant that um, is pretty easy to grow because it grows in these riparian habitats where uh, it, it resprouts a lot from the base of the plant. So if you take, like, you know, if you cut one of these stems really nicely with clippers and you put it in water, after about a week, the water will just be filled with roots. And the uh, re-sprouting ability of these stems is so strong that if you actually put stems of other plants in there, it'll induce them too to produce roots and you can get a whole garden going. But you don't wanna you know, over harvest these plants here at Strawberry Canyon because people come here and appreciate them. Uh, like I said, it's mostly found in riparian areas and this isn't one that's endemic to California. It's, uh, it's pretty widespread but it's usually found in arroyos, which you know, are wet places all the way out to New Mexico, I think. I've seen it out there, but it's much more rare. And um, this is a really nice plant that has a lot of medicinal qualities too. So the family is Salicaceae, and the bark contains salicylic acid, which is the active compound in aspirin. So if you have a headache, this is a plant that you can really, if you harvest the bark and you, you know, make a tea out of it, then you can 
use that to treat migraines and headaches and other types of aches and pains. But I think the main use of this plant kind of in California history has been for basketry and for building houses because it has these pretty malleable branches. So if you, you know, mess with them, they're not brittle. And so you can harvest, you know, big long branches of this and you can weave them into, into different types of structures. And if you actually plant those into the ground, you can make structures that are alive. They'll start to sprout leaves and, uh, and things like that. So to sum up, this is Salix lepis in the Salicaceae. It has simple alternate leaves on pretty long flexible branches. It has buds that look like mangoes. It has lanceolate leaves with irregular lobes. And if you get in there and look, it has stipules.